All right, let's dig into this a little bit deeper. So we're going to focus on hash values. So hash values we've established are trivial for the adversary to defeat, right? Again, if you have a block list with a SHA-256 and the adversary makes changes to uh, that file using, you know, any type of tool, uh, any modification to the file, and you're going to change the, the value, right? The hash value. And if you have a block list that's defending against that particular hash or the original hash, the adversary, just by making those changes, has defeated that defensive capability. Uh, and so when we look at hash values, as a defender, the goal is ultimately to have preventive capabilities in play. But you may use the hash values uh, for, for detective purposes, right? Or detection purposes. And, and, and the goal here might be that you, you had an incident, you don't know the full story of the incident, um, but you have uh, indicators, one of which might be a hash value that you need to scan your environment to see whether or not this was seen, right? So an, an indication of something. Remember, low cards exchange print principle, right? The goal here might be is you could use hash values to rule out whether or not something is um, a suspect, right? Um, and so it might be that uh, the, the SHA-256 that you're looking for is a Windows system and it's trusted and, uh, and therefore um, you can rule it out as part of the, the campaign the adversary was using. Um, likewise, you can use it to obviously now start to hone in on, you know, who or what uh, was used um, uh, during uh, an incident. And, and so um, the goal here now is to look at uh, the Cisco capabilities and align it to the hash value, right? And so when you do that, I, I've broken it up to detection and, and then uh, prevention. So detection in green, prevention in red. And you can see detection, you've got endpoint, umbrella, tetration, firepower, email, web, uh, threat grid, and stealth watch. And I include cognitive capabilities both for, for stealth watch and web. Um, and, and, and so, you know, technologies like threat grid and stealth watch, they're more detection type capabilities, right? There's some integration that you can use and leverage to help drive automation around prevention but a lot of it is really focused on detective capabilities, right? Now, when we get into prevention, now we're looking at endpoint amp, right? The ability to block a hash, right? Um, umbrella, titration, firepower, email, um, web. Um, so, you know, the web security appliance as an example, right? They, they all have the ability um, to mitigate or prevent um, that file hash, maybe from coming in uh, to the organization, right? As far away from the, the asset you're, you're defending um, or as close to the asset, right? At, at, in regards to actually targeting and being, uh, you know, downloaded or USB key plugged into the endpoint and having a, a, a uh, technology that could, you know, detect and, and, and ultimately mitigate that threat. So here's the justification for this. So stealth watch and cognitive, um, it consumes flow data, right? But it also consumes proxy log data, right? We know that even though there's a stealth watch cognitive element that we're focused on, I just want to highlight there is proxy log data that you could feed into it. So in regards to flow data, hash values can be detected using any connect network visibility module. So there's some integration there on the endpoint that can feed in those hash values into stealth watch uh, and cognitive. Those hash values can be marked as malicious through Cisco Talos intelligence and further investigated. Um, obviously intelligence gained on, uh, from stealth watch and the network visibility module um, can be used to feed into other preventative capabilities. And we'll talk more about maybe some of that automation a little bit later, but the focus here really is a detection capability with stealth watch and cognitive. Um, obviously there's that integration piece around any connect network visibility module as well. When we look at endpoint amp, we've got a detection and prevention capability. So endpoint amp can consume hashes through Cisco Talos, custom detections, it can prevent push prevention capabilities to other Cisco security technologies, such as web, email, and firepower. 
because those el those technologies become endpoint products within endpoint amp it's pretty cool we call it amp unity um so if you as an example wanted to prevent a threat on the endpoint you can right click block it and it'll actually push that prevention capability into the web security appliance into email security as well as firepower as as an example um the other thing that we can do here is hash values are calculated right and evaluated against multiple engines right and we're not going to get into deep into every single technology um, cisco talos intelligence obviously can feed into the the platform um, sandboxed uh, files uh, we can look for you know suspicious behavior right so that's the threat grid integration um, so we can detonate a file in threat grid um, and look for the behaviors there. I think there's well over a thousand behavioral indicators within the platform. Um, and then the intelligence gains could be fed into other preventative platforms. Okay. Firepower threat defense um, consumes hashes, obviously Cisco Talos, custom detections. Uh, we can also do third parties uh, feeds using uh, sticks. Um, and, and it can be used both as a detection and preventive capability. Um, Firepower also integrates with threat grid. So now you get that sandboxing and you get that rich behavioral insight as well. Um, and uh, again, the ability to share the intelligence that you get from Firepower in, and, and feeding that into other platforms. Email, obviously, file ha files come into to, uh, the email security appliance, whether it's cloud or on-premise. Again, the ability to use multiple uh, engines to prevent maybe a file hash from uh, invoking its will on an endpoint uh, or the victim. Um, intelligence from Cisco Talos, custom detections uh, through endpoint AMP. So this is a little bit stalled there because I was thinking in, in my head a couple other things. but. The endpoint amp, this is again uh, getting fed by um, endpoint amp at, at, and, and leveraging firepower email and web security appliances as the, uh, the ability to add additional detection capabilities further in the network. You've got external threat feeds. Cisco email security also integrates with threat grid. So again, you get that sandboxing capability for that rich behavioral insight. Intelligence gain obviously can be uh, fed into other preventative platforms. Web and cognitive um, has it has the ability uh, to generate an identifier for each file using uh, SHA-256 to detect and prevent file hashes. Again, using multiple engines. Uh, intelligent Cisco Talos obviously powers all the Cisco security technologies. You've got custom detections through endpoint AMP. Um, Cisco Web Security also integrates through Threat Grid for sandboxing. Again, you see a theme that's happening here intelligence gains here is um, obviously uh, fed into other preventative platforms. So when we look at the at least the first five technologies, one stealth watch has a detective capability. The other four have both detective and and preventive capabilities. Rounding this out, now we move into umbrella, right? So obviously at the DNS layer, we're not gonna do very much in regards to hashes, but umbrella becomes more, um, you know, that sassy you might hear, right? Secure access, secure edge, or secure internet gateway. Um, and, and so now you have the ability to do selective or full proxy capabilities within um, the, the offering. And now that you're proxying, we have the ability to prevent uh, malicious hashes um, leveraging AMP file reputation, obviously powered by Cisco intelligence. You have threat grid sandboxing um, of files is leveraged by Umbrella's full proxy capabilities, right? Providing behavioral analysis and disposition. Umbrella Investigate allows you to research SHA-256. So now we're, we're actually using the platform for investigations, right? And our, our own uh, research. And, and so with that, if you had... Cisco Threat Grid, you have the ability to pivot into these in, into Threat Grid to get deeper analysis. Now you're getting into the behavioral side of, of what the file might do, right? Or the hash. Again, intelligence gain can be um, offered or fed into other preventative platforms. Now Umbrella has a detection and obviously a preventative capability. Threat Grid, on the other hand, is purely detection, right? 
Um, so ThreatGrid has the ability to analyze files and calculate hashes to determine behaviors and supporting artifacts associated with that hash. ThreatGrid integration through APIs can provide prevention and retrospection capabilities with other security products. So retrospection is really going back in time and empowering the analysts with knowledge in regards to that the compromise may have happened before we knew it was bad and therefore there's additional things that you might want to consider. Um, behavioral indicators are the key traits and, and behaviors that have been identified as indicators of malicious files, right? So obviously these indicators uh, include uh, severity levels, uh, HTTP traffic, DNS traffic, uh, TCP IP network sessions, processes, artifacts, registry activities, and more, right? So again, now you're looking at the the output, the outcome of the uh, the analysis of that file. Um, and you get a tremendous amount of intelligence from it. Um, retired behavioral indicators are also included. Uh, intelligence gained can be used to feed other preventative uh, platforms. Tetration, uh, now you get into tetration, which can baseline the processes and understands you know, how the process needs to communicate on the network. The information includes process ID, process parameters, uh, the user associated with it, process start time, hash, signature uh, information. You can search for servers running a specific process or a process hash um, and get a tree view snapshot. Actually, it's pretty cool um, around all the processes that are running on the server. Communication from files and said hashes can be blocked with tetration. Again, intelligence gained in this platform can be used in preventative capabilities. So this is the justification. And so you can see that, you know, some technologies have both detection and, and prevention capabilities, while others only have a detection capabilities. Pretty cool, right, uh, so far. So this is the justifications around hash values and, and what Cisco technologies could do to assist both detection and prevention.